Uttama Adhikari. So similarly, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is going deeper into the meaning of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur by saying that it's true that as soon as Nam touches this tongue, Namatmukam, as soon as Nam touches the tongue, Rasa Sprig, then the taste of Nam touching the tongue gives automatic liberation and it automatically gives Krishna Prem even. But what is the quality of the tongue that will get touched by the name? That is, if we're speaking about Nam Aparad, that name, uh, that name does not deliver and that name needs Diksha and all kinds of other purificatory activities in order to have effect. But the pure Nam, that name doesn't need any help. It doesn't need any uh, previous regulative uh, purification activities to chant. It doesn't require Diksha, it doesn't require anything. So when Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying that one should honor a person who's actually received Diksha in a certain way, this Diksha means real Diksha, that he's actually has some transcendental knowledge of his relationship with Krishna and Ksha, his anarthas have gone away. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explained that one who's chanting real Nam means Karam Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Sarva Bhavito Kirtan. Sarvena Bhavito Kirtan. One who's chanting in Bhava Bhakti and one who's such a person begins to chant Shuddha Nam. He's really chanting Nam. And such a person actually we offer respects within the deepest core of our heart and with our obeisances and with service. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives the deeper meaning of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And from him we learn how to serve Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and the previous Acharyas. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's Pranam Mantra says, Madhur Jojala Pamaja Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da. That is, for someone to chant general Nam, then anyone can be offered respects for chanting Nam Aparad. But if one wants to reach this Madhur Jaujala Prem that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, then he gives himself and hears the Nam from one who's approaching pure devotee or one who is a pure devotee. So he came to give Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da. He came to give that which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. Unat Ujjala Rasam So Bhakti Sriyam. That very rare opportunity of becoming a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. And um, he could not tolerate any statement that was against the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. Without proper understanding of Siddhanta from Rupa Goswami, by not making a distinction between Siddhanta and Upa Siddhanta, there's no way to advance in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, he destroyed with all of his very strong arguments anything that was against the statements of Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami is Srila Sri uh, Rupa Manjari, and by following his Siddhanta, one gets his mood. Generally, we're very concerned about our own uh, name and fame and who likes me and who doesn't like me and who honors me and who doesn't honor me. So if anyone is doubting, why should I be so concerned about these specifics that he was criticized for giving sannyas, or he was criticized for giving sacred thread, or he was criticized for um, <coughs> taking sannyas from a picture of his Gurudev instead of his Gurudev in front of him. Why should I be concerned about this? Why should I be concerned about establishing his glory and defending his integrity? What does that have to do with my general life? They have everything to do with our general life. He is Nayana Manjari. That means in that realm, he 
is like the twinkle of the eye in Srimati Radhika to help her to see Krishna. Whenever she's feeling separation from Krishna, he's always helping her to meet and see Krishna. Similarly, she has another glance, another eye on this world. And Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is Srimati Radhika's eye on this world, Nayana Manjri. As she looks on this world to give this world mercy and take away all the unhappiness from this world, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is her eye. So if one wants to come to that platform of defending the um, integrity and honor of Srimati Radhika and get that Unat, unat Ojvala Rasam Svabhakti Sriyam or that uh, Madhur Dojala Prema Adya that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur came to give where one can be as a chokidar in the just outside the Kunj of Srimati Radhika and Krishna is coming late having been with some other gopi and that Manjuri will say oh you cannot come into the Kunj of my Swamini she has her honor no one can cheat her and come in her Kunj so in order to come to that high platform that he wants to give Maduja, Maduja Ojvala Prema Adya Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da in order to come to that platform of defending Srimati Radhika when she is uh, insulted by Krishna, then we have to begin with Guru. Srila Gurudev explained that unless we're feeling intense separation for Guru, we can never feel it for Radha and Krishna. Similarly, when we know Siddhanta and we engage our life in defending and protecting the integrity and glory of our Gurudev and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and our Guru Parampara, then gradually we can come to get what he wanted to give. That's Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da. In morning I told that Srila uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur gave Kurma uh, mantra to Srila Prabhupada. But if he was also high devotee, high class of devotee, <laughs> always sinking in the ocean of love and affection for Radha and Krishna Jesus. Why he was given Kurma Mantra? And Bhaktivinoda Thakur told to worship. Why? Because So the Bhakti Vinod Thakur bought a land in Calcutta and he wanted a house there for his whole family. <coughs> and he wanted to be to be given to his family and he will come to Sarupa Gandhi for Bhajan. At that time when Bhitti was dealing Oh, from the, from the ground, a Kurma Dev manifested. gram, but it was Kurma. Then Bhakti Vinod Thakur told, Oh, by his mercy he has a baby. So we should not throw him then out here. But who will mercy? I have no time because I will have to go to my office here and there. So he told Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Bhimlanam, O Bhimlanam, you should worship and take this money. So no heart. How old was he then? I think he was eh? six or seven years old. Very small yes, seven. Seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> At I have heard that he gave this mantra at the age of five. Yeah. Oh, like Prahlad Maharaj, very genius. So, he gave. so don't have doubt that why he gave oh, a cool moment to me. Oh, by accident it was. Also, you should know that 
to give some gas to so many persons. So many very qualified boys. I named yesterday. This morning. This morning. And he once <coughs> he told Parvat Maharaj <coughs> from Odisha he was. I don't remember his place where, but from anyhow in Odisha he was. And he told that he used to go to Haridwar and other places to preach. And he gave a party and he went to preach in Haridwar and all the places. But he thought that oh, so many pilgrims are going to Badri Narayan and Kedar. So I should go. And very quickly I will return back and So he went there, Badri Narayan and then Kedarnath and he returned back. Prabhupada Sri Bhakti Siddhanath Nirmuti is fact. He called back him. No need of preaching. Oh, he took his sannyas base and saffron cloth at once and told that now your name is Badri Nyan Dasadhikari. <laughs> I will not allow you to be in saffron cloud and sanyas. And then for so many years he was in white dress, not sanyas, and now he becomes so humble, so much obedient that all began to tell to Prabhupada, please be merciful and return back. Then Prabhupada mercifully returned back again. So he was so... Once, a letter came from the house mother from our Gurudev. No? A letter came that I am now about to die. Please send my, you know, that at the time of death, I might, may see him for lost time. I want nothing. What he has done, he has done good. But I want to see him. Then Prabhupada called him and told, Oh, you should go at once to your mother. And go and see her and serve and then return. He ordered and our Guru Maharaj, Sri Bhakti, Kesha Bhushan, he returned back and then he went in a corner of a very dark room and began to chant, whole night chanting. He did not went to his mother. So the Prabhupada also had some doubt that whether he has done or not, but I am not seeing him. So, where is he? Has he gone? Follow my order or not? Oh, go and search him. And if he is here, call him. <laughs> and then anyone came and told that he, he is in sitting in the dark room all night, <laughs> chanting and weeping. Then he called. Why you could not went to your mother to see him in lying bed, in death bed? Why you could not? Prabhupada, he told very humbly, looking on earth, weeping, that oh, after millions and millions of life, pieces of life, I have made now in this human life to you. I don't want to miss. If I will go to my mother at the time of day, 
importantly, she may tell that, oh, my dear boy, I don't believe in all my any other choice. I believe in you and I have so much affection for you. After me, you should try to save them and support and nourish. So you should be here. And look after Jamin Dai. Huh? Land holding. Land holding. So I will have to obey her last and then anyhow I have been engaged in this art and I will be very far away from you, Lord Sri. That is what I am thinking what to do, not to do. All night I was arrested. Prabhupada told that, yes, you are right. I was taking your test whether you are going or not. I am very nistful, cruel hearted. I brought so many jewels, qualified sons and husbands of their family. I don't want they should be again involved. A brahmachari, pakka brahmachari and sannyasi, they should not go to their family person, even his wife, sister, son or anyone. Otherwise he should give up sannyas. Better to give sannyas, renounce order, but not to be by any trick or any thing that, oh, I should go and help my son, my wife, my children, my sister. Sannyas means samyaknas. Prabhupada told, Nash means to cut all the worldly relations and thickly be connected with Guru Padpatma and Vaishnava. Anyhow, Nartam Thakur, our Bhaktim Nartam Thakur has written this. Sanyasin karya yehi na hai, kutumma laya kare bharana poshan or he should go to his related persons. Sanyasin should. So, in this, Shri Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Sati, Jagadanand Pandit has told this. Jagadanand. Oh, Jagadanand Pandit. Oh, not any ordinary person. Jagadanand who? He was also a renowned person. And one of the associates, not only associate, very intimate associate. And he has told. We should try to follow that is a nasty or we should come. Really the relation. And relations will come one pointed to Krishna. Otherwise, he should be in Vrihas life, supporting and nursing them and being here. So we should always remember. I wanted to tell so many things, but I want to hear also. You should be speak. Sir. Also, I am very cruel in this matter. If I will hear anyone having any connection and going there, I will take their sannyas and everything, saffron cloth, and I will uh, give name or like that. That's all the time. Open one or two windows there. Wow. On the top only, not like this. Om Gyan Timiran Dhasya Gyanam Janushalakana Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Itinyama Vanchakalpaturugascha Kripa Sindhu Gevacham 
Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He is the, like the engineer of this modern Krishna consciousness movement. Srila Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he was like the architect. He designed the whole plan. He wrote all of the directions, all of the Shastras. And he called for the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna and Srimati Radhika to send their dear most servitor, their empowered servitor to this world to execute this great mission and to bring Krishna consciousness movement, the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the length and breadth of the entire world. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur first of all wrote one book in English language and this was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his life and precepts. And he sent this book to the Western countries, into universities in Canada and England. And in this way, he began this flow. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's movement, it is called Bhaktivinoda Dhara like a stream, a transcendental stream of nectar flowing down from Srila Rupa Goswami Pad and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as we heard, without the uh, presence of these divine personalities in this world who strongly preach the message of Mahaprabhu and, and completely smashed all misconceptions of the Apasampradayas and Mayavad misconceptions that were so prevalent at that time. Without their coming, it is sure and certain that this Krishna consciousness movement would not have come to the Western world, and even more, it could have disappeared or gone underground within the land of Bharata. But by the mercy and the divine empowerment of these personalities, oh, today we are sitting here. None of us could be here if it was not for the mercy of Srila Sachidananda Bhaktivinod Thakur and his divine representative, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So, actually, how have we received this mercy? How has it come to us? Because Srila Prabhupada, from the first meeting with Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, from the first meeting of uh, this divine personality in 1921, when he was young man and householder and coming to his lotus feet for the first time to hear him speak the message of Gauravani. Then as soon as he arrived there with some other classmates of his, university classmates, uh, and paid his obeisances to this sadhu, the very first words that he heard from him was that, oh, you are all intelligent Western persons. Huh? You should preach this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the whole world, to the English-speaking world. It will be good for you. And then, at that time, uh, Abai Charan Day, at that time, he uh, objected, he gave some argument that, oh, how is it possible that we can uh, preach and distribute this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Who will listen to us in the world? We are a dependent nation. We are ruled by another country. So who will listen to us? What kind of voice will we have? And then at that time, Srila Prabhupada, he defeated Abhay Charande. Uh, and he told him that this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not dependent upon any political situation, who is ruling, which party is ruling, which country is ruling. It is completely transcendental. So in many ways he defeated him and then uh, Abhay Charande at that time said, I very much 
was so pleased to be defeated by my Guru Maharaj. And from that moment, he accepted him. He told, I accepted him in my heart as my Guru Dev. And he left that place thinking, ah, now the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is in the hands of a very great personality, very qualified personality. So years later, he also sent one letter just before the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. And he asked him that, I, have, I am one of your disciples, you have many thousands of disciples. I am a householder and I, I cannot do service like you have so many brahmacharis and sannyasis. So what can I do? What service can I do for you? And then Srila Prabhupada wrote back to him. Uh, and he said it was the same message that he had gotten 12 or uh, so many years before in 1921 at their first meeting. He told him, he said that you should always try to preach this message in the English language and without uh, uh, any kind of uh, difficulty you should try to print books. Whenever you get any money, you should try to print books and distribute to the world. So by these orders of Srila Prabhupada, by the divine inspiration coming from him into the heart of Abhay Charan Dei. He carried out this order of his Guru Maharaj and by his mercy he came across the oceans to reach the whole western world with the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we should understand like Guru Dev told this morning that he is like an arm, an extended arm of Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. It was him who was doing this preaching work, who had given his mercy to all the fallen souls throughout the world, whose heart was breaking to give this mercy and this line of Bhaktivinoda Dara to the whole world. It said, and Abhai Charanaravinda, who became Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he brought this message to everyone by the empowerment of his Guru Dev. And also by the empowerment of the most intimate servitor of his Guru Dev. Srila Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, who was his dear most bosom friend and who empowered him by giving him sannyas order and making him to drink the nectar of bhakti rasa. Vairagya yug bhakti rasam prayatnaya. And by the empowerment and mercy of these divine personalities, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj was able to go to the length and breadth of the world and to bring thousands and millions of people to the lotus feet of uh, Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. So who was this exalted divine personality? who came within this world by the calling of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He was direct associate of Radha and Krishna in transcendental uh, Sri Vrindavan Dham and a personal associate of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And his whole life was simply a complete manifestation of his highly exalted position. As we heard this morning from Gurudev, so many indications in his very childhood and we heard also from the lotus mouth of our Guru Dev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, how his Prabhupada uh, had such an exalted nature and qualities, and how powerful he was. He used to tell that my Guru Maharaj was hard like a thunderbolt, but also he was very soft like a rose. So his Vaishnava qualities were so exalted that Bhajanarajita Sajjana Sangha Patim that even the most exalted personalities, the most highly elevated transcendentalists, oh, they want his association. They are worshipping his lotus feet. So uh, I want to tell how Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati in his youth there are so many beautiful stories in his biography about his manifesting, his divine character. But one particular uh, history tells of one 
time when he was in his youth and he was in his teens. We heard this morning that already he was very, very renowned and he was so highly exalted in the science of astrology. But also, he was vastly, vastly learned in all the Shastras. And it so happened that at that time, there was a very great challenge which had come from the Brahmana, especially the smarter Brahmana community that was prevalent around Navadvip Dam area at that time. And they made a challenge to the Gaudiya Vaishnav community that uh, we are everywhere it is stated in the Shastras that Krishna, the Supreme Lord, is more favored to the Brahmanas. Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmana Hitayacha that he is always favoring the Brahmanas uh, even more above the Vaishnavas. So this challenge came and many of the exalted Vaishnavas in Navadvip Dham, uh, they elected that Srila Sachidananda Bhaktivinoda Thakur would come and he would present all of the evidence of Shastra and he would defend all of these bogus uh, accusations coming from the smart Brahmana community. But at that time, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was bedridden and he was manifesting the lila of being sick. So he told, huh? he told to his uh, dear most yes. disciple so thing, and son. I want to tell you yeah. that you told that uh, Krishna is go from Mandita yeah. and he has given more importance, importance of Brahman than Vaishnava. Where? Any example? No, the smartest idea. Then okay. Yes, so, but anyway, whole Bengal or whole India was suffering from in these days. Yeah. A smart Brahman. They wanted their influence. So, so then Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave him the order that he should go. Even though he was still in his youth, but he had full confidence in him that he would be able to go there and present perfectly the final conclusions of all the Shastras to prove that Krishna is always favoring the Vaishnavas over the Brahmanas and that a, and a, a pure Vaishnava he is automatically a Brahmana but a Brahmana is not automatically a Vaishnava so then at that time Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada who was known as Sar, uh, Siddhanta Saraswati at that time he prepared one amazing essay, which actually now we also, it has been translated, that same essay has been translated into English language. And all of the quotations which he gathered from so many different Shastras to support his conclusions are all mentioned there in this book. Very, very vast essay that he wrote. So, with, uh, uh, empowered with this essay, and armed with this ammunition, he now went to this meeting in Medinapur. Medinapur. So, at this assembly, the Brahmanas were seated on one side. So, the Brahmanas were seated on one side. He did not went, but he was sent by Srila Bhakti Vinodhaku. Yes. He was deputed by him. So, uh, on one side were the Brahmanas, and on the other side were the Vaishnavas. In that gathering of Vaishnavas, there were also many exalted personalities re uh, revered amongst the Vaishnava community. But they had chosen Siddhanta Saraswati as the presenter of the, all of this pure Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta. So, the, uh, the director of the assembly, he had given chance to the Brahmanas to present their arguments. And so they had spoken for a very, very long time. 
those who were representing the Brahmanas. And they had presented so many different evidences from the Shastra. So now, uh, at the end of that evening, then they uh, adjourned, and then the next day, again they began. But now they gave chance to Siddhanta Saraswati and the Vaishnava side to begin to present all of their uh, uh, evidence. So now, uh, Srila Saras Siddhanta Saraswati, he began, first of all, to present all various quotations from the Vedic Shastras about the exalted position of the Brahmanas. So many different quotations he gathered from everywhere in the Vedas, Upanishads, in Mahabharata, and so many different places. And he presented a very, very powerful presentation, so much so that it practically appeared that he was stating that the Brahmanas were in the superior position. So he spoke for many, many hours like this. And as he was speaking, uh, the Brahmanas who were on one side, they became very happy. They were very encouraged. And they thought, oh, very nice, he's supporting our side. So he spoke till the end of the, of the day. Then, uh, again, they had to resume the next day. So, in the, in the early morning time, again, he began to speak. And now, he began to present from the Shastras so many powerful evidences and quotations which superseded all the quotations that he had made about the Brahmanas and directly showed that the Vaishnava is superior to a Brahmana and a Brahmana, Brahmin. Yeah. And a Brahmana is not by birth. Not simply, so many statements from Shastra explaining that in Kali Yuga there is no pure birth lineage and in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says Chatur Varnya Maya Shistam Guna Karma Vibhagasha that all of the divisions of the four varna, Varnas and Ashramas they are not determined by birth but by quality, Guna and by Karma, by work. So in this way Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur he began to glorify the position of the Vaishnavas and as the Vaishnavas were hearing this they were feeling so much happiness and the whole crowd there were thousands of people who were assembled there for this great debate and everyone was beaming and uh, so finally he spoke all the way through the entire day and at the end of his whole session those who were making the, the judges of the debate they unanimously decided in the favor of Siddhanta Saraswati that he had perfectly presented these arguments and thoroughly represented the position of Shastras and, and firmly established that the Vaishnava position is superior to the Brahmin's position. This morning we heard from the lotus lips of Srila Gurudev about the divine and uncommon appearance pastimes of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur and about his uncommon childhood. And we have heard from the perspective of a loving father, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how he was somewhat worried about his son, how he tried to find some engagements for him in this world. But at every step, he failed because his son had too much devotion. He failed in his chemical business, in his uh, Ayurvedic business. He failed in his teaching business. Every, every place he felt. So finally, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur acquired land in Mayapur and deities there and he began to serve the deities there. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazavi Thakur, from his childhood, he was so devoted. We have heard how his father in his childhood gave him the mantra to Kurmadev. He did not give him mantra to Radha and Krishna. Why? Because he wanted to manifest within this world a very wonderful pastime. The pastime of Srila, this Bhimal Prasad, taking shelter of the lotus feet of Nityalila Parvishnam Vishwapad Sishimad, Gaur Kishwad Das Babaji Maharaj. Even though Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasori Thakur was the most learned scholar in the whole of India. He was learned in all Veda Vedanta Upanishad, Vyakaranam, Sanskrit. He was the most learned person in astrology even. That 
the um, uh, dean of the college, Calcutta University, kept open a seat for him there, that he should be head of the astrology department. So from the material perspective, he had all types of qualifications even. But what happened? He was very much attracted to the lotus feet of Srila Goki Shodas Babaji Maharaj. Srila Goki Shodas Babaji Maharaj had come from a very simple family. In his Purva Ashram, he was a grain merchant. And upon the passing away of his wife, he accepted Babaji Vesh. And he came to Navadip and was doing bhajan there. He had no education, it seems. It seems that he could not even write his own name. And now, the most learned scholar in the whole world came to him and begged him, please accept me as your disciple. I want to accept you as my Gurudev, please accept me. But Srila Goki Shodas Babaji Maharaj said, no. You are the son of Srila Bhakti, the great personality Srila Bhakti no Thakur. You are from a very high class Brahmin family. And you have a very uh, great education. No, he did not told like this. Brahmin family is never told. He said, oh, he did not say you are from Brahmin Vaishnav, family. Vaishnav family. Vaishnav family. You are from great Vaishnav family. And uh, you are very educated. So, mm, I should not, you should not accept me as your spiritual master. He begged again and again. He said, I will ask Gauri Thai. Srila, that time Bhimal Prasad, he went away and then came back. Will you accept me? Oh, I forgot to ask Gauri Thai. In this way, Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj made so many excuses. So finally, Bhimal Prasad, Siddhanta Sarasvati, he went away and he was doing Chandrayan Vrata. This is a very difficult vow in which the person on the full moon day can take 15 bites of food and then the next day 14, the next day 13 and down, down on the astami only 8 bites and then 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then fasting and then again they can increase. So according to the cycle of the moon they control their eating and Siddhanta Sazati was becoming very, very thin and and sick, not taking by hand, only by like a, eating like a cow from the ground with the mouth. So at that time, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he requested Gogi Shodas Babaji Maharaj, just see how this boy is uh, so determined to uh, take shelter of your lotus feet. And just see how he's becoming very lean and thin. It is as if he is about to die. He's very sincere. And on the inspiration of Srila Bhakti no Thakur, then Srila Gopi Shodas Babaji Maharaj accepted and initiated in him and gave him the name Sri Barsha Banavi Devi Daita Das, the servant of Srimati Radhika. So the question may come, why is it eh, that the most learned person and qualified person from such an aristocratic family will take shelter of this person who seems to not have a very great background? Oh. The answer is that the disciple does not approach the Guru for any position in this world. In his humility, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sagari Thakur said, When I came to my Guru, I had so many uh, false egos, thinking that I was a great scholar, I was a great aristocrat. In his humility, he said. But my Gurudev, by his causes mercy, he sprinkled the dust from his feet upon my head. And at that time, I became unconscious unaware of all of these things by his causeless mercy. Because when the disciple approaches the lotus feet of Sadhguru, he does not come for any kind of prestige, power, position, or material education. But rather, Srila Goki Shodas Babaji Maharaj had what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur was searching for. What is that? He was always weeping. Radhe 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 Jai 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 Sri Radhe Shodas 
Babaji Maharaj himself would sing. He would, had the inspiration in his heart to manifest this kirtan in the world, in which the mood of Raghunath Das Goswami has been expressed. Kote go prema mai radhe radhe, o Shimati Radhika, where are you? Go sai niyam kore sadai dake radhe radhe. Raghunath Das Goswami is always crying. O oh, Shimati Radhika, where are you? Malin Vasan Diyagai Radhe Radhe, giving up his worldly uh, royal attire of being a wealthy person and putting on the grey cloth covered in the dust, uh, just ordinary uh, dirty white cloth. Malin Vasan Diyagai Radhe Radhe, Braja Dulai Gadagadi Jai Radhe Radhe, with his voice choked, he would roll on the ground in the pain of separation from Srimati Radhika. Mukhe Radhe Radhe Bale Radhe Radhe Bose Nayanera Jale Radhe Radhe Always calling out the name of Radhika and drowning in the current of his own tears of separation. So Srila Gorki Shtodas Babaji Maharaj was like this. And upon seeing this, that Bimal Prasad, seeing this, a greed came. And he said, I want to have a mood like you. This is the reason why we approach the Lotus Feet of Sri Guru. Not for anything else. Only for this mood of deep love and separation from the lotus feet of Radhika, that one day we may attain her service. And in this way, he took shelter of his Gurudev. And in 1905, at the age of only 31, he took shelter of the Chandra Shekhar Bhavan in Mayapur Dham and began to observe his vow to chant one billion names, one billion names of Radha and Krishna. That means to complete three lakhs, Harinam, 192 rounds every day for 10 years. So he began his vow and he was completely absorbed in Nam Bhajan and reading the books of Agoswamis. At that time, Srila Gokishodas Babaji Maharaj, he commented, Oh, I can see the Vairagya of Das Goswami in my Prabhu. He would call his disciple, my Prabhu. Mm -hmm. And he said, I see the Vairagya, renunciation of Raghunath Das Goswami in him. It was at that time when Srila, Srila uh, there at that time, Bhakshya Bhanavi Devi Daita Das, he wrote his commentary on Shikshastakam, Mana Shiksha, and Sri Chaitanya Chardamritam. These commentaries on Mana Shiksha and Shikshastakam, very mercifully Srila Gurudev has translated and presented to us. So that we can see the method by which Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazori Thakur was doing his bhajan and his deep realization of the Siddha Pranali, that is the Shikshastakam of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Mana Shiksha of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. But in the year 1914, Srila Bhakti Thakur discovered his unmanifest pastimes. He left the vision of ordinary mortals in this world. And shortly after, in 1915, Srila Gokishore Das Babaji Maharaj also departed from this world. Now, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasori Thakur was in this world apparently without the association of his nearest and dearest, his Diksha Guru, Srila Gokishore Das Babaji Maharaj, and his Shiksha Guru, and all in all, the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur. What to do now? Vaishnavism was in a dark period. So, by the inspiration, of his Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. He took sannyas and he began his preaching. But in what way did he preach? Previously other Vaishnavas, other Acharyas, they had spread the glories of their Siddhanta by taking uh, patronage from a king or a powerful person. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazori Thakur, just taking the help of some very young teenage boys hmm, who had left their homes and everything, he gave them sannyas and with them he began to preach everywhere. And in the beginning they had nothing. At that time when Vinod Bihari Brahmachari, uh, Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Paramananda Prabhu and others came, there was nothing. Gaudiya Math meant that oh, Paramananda Prabhu would the, offer Artik and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sadhana Thakur would ring the bell only. Narahari would offer Artik and Paramananda Prabhu would ring the bell. And this was Gaudiya Math. There was nothing. They were so poor, they had nothing to eat. They would pick some weeds from the jungle and boil them and eat them. And if Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajra Thakur would notice that they had nothing to eat, they would tell, Oh Gurudev, eh, we are practicing Vairagya. Hmm? They would not bring any bad news into the ear of their Gurudev. 
because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sadhguru Thakur inspired within them so much faith and devotion in the lotus feet of Sri Guru and in the service of Gauranga that tolerating all difficulties and in a very humble and simple way they began the preaching and very soon only within a few years it began to spread all over India everywhere and mats began to come and thousands and thousands of disciples came to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasari Thakur because his teachings were astonishing he would tell the people don't try to see Krishna try to behave in such a way that Krishna will want to see you this is the method of self-realization he told them oh you cannot the enter into transcendental bhajan by imitation by imagination any more than a woman can give birth to a child by going into the hospital lying on the table in the maternity ward and making sounds like a woman in labor can she give birth quite impossible so by imitation is not possible you have to serve lotus feet of guru and not any ritual will have to go on nishta then taste ruchi asakti attachment and then one can enter into internal services of lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. He preached very boldly all of these things and established hmm, the pure vichadhara of Srila Bhakti no Thakur. That means the pure teachings of Rupa and Raghunath. In 1924, on this day, his birthday, he arranged for Vyasa Puja, the worship of the whole Guru Parampara. And at that time, he gave a very astonishing speech. All the disciples and many others had come and worshipped him with many presentations of flower garlands and donations. Then, seeing that there were some people in the audience who could not recognize his position or understand the meaning of Guru Seva, hearing what they were whispering in their hearts, he gave a lecture. And in that lecture, he explained that there are some people here who are thinking, who is that person sitting up on a big high seat accepting all of this worship? when many learned and respectable personalities are seated upon the ground. What kind of animal from a zoo, hmm? what kind of brute can sit there proudly on a big seat while others are sitting on the ground? Hmm? Then to you, I give this answer. You know that a Vaishnav will never accept the position of Guru. Vaishnav, this thought will not come in his mind. I am Guru because Vaishnav is Trinad Pisuni Chena Torori Vasishtana. Hmm? More humble than a blade of grass. Hmm? So Vaishnava will never think I am Guru. Yet on the other hand, unless a Vaishnava accepts the position of Guru, then the transcendental family will come to an end. Hmm? The Sampradaya will not go on. So then what will he do? So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur, he explains that at the time of Rasa Leela, when the gopis were searching for Krishna, at that time they began to weep. Chuta Piala Panasasana Kovidara Bilvaka Jamba Bakula Kadamba Nipa Yenge Parata Bhavaka Yamuno Pakula Samstantu Krishna Padavim Rahitat Manam Naha The gopis were searching for Krishna on the bank of Jamuna and they were approaching the, the trees Chuta Piala Panasasana Kovidara O Kovidara tree, O mango tree, O jambu tree, Bakul tree Hmm? Oh banyan tree, they're asking the trees, have you seen Krishna? Because you live on the bank of Jamuna, you live in this holy place, then you are sadhus and you are very merciful to others. So please be merciful to us and tell us where is the son of Nanda Maharaj because he has taken our hearts and he has run away. So gopis of Vrindavan having the highest praying, then they see even the trees and creepers and flowers of Vrindavan to be like their guru. So similarly, the Maha Bhagavad Vaishnav, he never sees that he is Guru, but rather he sees that everyone is his Guru. Was in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Similarly, so many Acharya came to India. Sankaracharya, Ramanuja Acharya, Matuha Acharya, Vishnu Sangha, Nimbadi, Pallava Acharya, so many came. After that, she, Sarup Damodaraya Ramananda, Sada Goswami, Krishnadas Kapiraj Goswami, up to Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But all the ideals 
were included in Srila Prabhupada. What proof Goswami? Okay, you heard something from Aranya Maharaj, from Raghunath Das Goswami. He took sannyas by process from Ramanuja Chakra. He did not talk from Nityananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because they were egg dandy. And that is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu broken in three pieces. And three pieces, three dandy. <laughs> so he followed this process from uh, Ramanujacha. And Madhvachar. Madhvachar. O five Siddhant. Jeevishwari Bhed. Jeeve Jeeve Bhed. Jeev Jade Bhed. Jade Jade Bhed. Jade Ishwari Bhed. But then Vidya Bhushan has told all this. So Prabhupada. In Prabhupada. All these things were there. Padur Maharaj used to tell that uh, Ramanujachat, Madhvachat, especially Shankarachat, Madhvachat and others, they took help from big, big kings, very powerful and wealthy personals, so many, uh, like Buddha Dev, by Ashok, uh, Sankarachat by so many. Paramanu, so many big, big wealthy persons of uh, South India. Madhva Charsen. But Prabhupada, what did miracle? He told to his disciples, Oh, I am giving you one very small box. You should go to, to door to door in a station, a railway station, bosses, in markets, everywhere, and tell them to give one pice only, don't take two, and tell them what is Krishna Bhajan. Go to door to door and tell them after. So many species you have become human. One day you will talk. You cannot take your even a hair or body and So please chant Hare Krishna. Take shelter of a bona fide to so go to door. And what began? Very soon in whole Bengal or whole India. Even he sent in his lifetime one Maharaj. Sri Bhakti Pradeep Tirth Maharaj, Sarang Goswami Maharaj, to Western countries, in, especially in England, Germany to here and there. So, he was very kind, very bold. So, all the ideals of the whole previous acharyas were in Siddha, some special also. He was bold, he was very high class of darshan, but even waiting, like he told in uh, Jagannath Puri Chatak Parvat, here and there. Once he was in Radhakund, and big Parikrama was there, more than 500, 600 or 1000. And there he told, the same word you told. In the exhibition and so many things. He told, I came to this world. I began to cut the jungle of Maya, Bhat, Sahajiya, Saki, Bheki and all others. Both Bhavad also. And my whole life uh, went away in this way. But you should remember, this is not the aim and object of our life. To be the, uh, the maid servant of the Lord's feet of Siddharupa Goswami. 
all things they can buy. How to receive the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sachinandan Gautari, and Radha Krishna Kajjura? For this Nityananda Prabhu came, for Baldev Prabhu came. So please remember, cutting jungle and all other things that I have done, it was necessary for to establish that thing. So don't be so much engaged in this. Always remember our aim and object to have love and affection for Radha Krishna. Otherwise you will be karmi. Karmi. He has written uh, in Go. Uh, at the Gaudiya Magazine, it is written. So, we should also try to do Where what we are doing, establishing press, publishing books, Gaushala, medical helps, Guru Kul, Adit. But you don't. Uh, invest your whole time in that. You should try to know the aim and object that I told for two days, yesterday, especially I told. This is our aim and object. Also, he used to tell my guru that Srila Prabhupada has a special mercy to Jiva. He never told anyone. Uh, disciple or anything. Oh, Ramananda. Oh, this, this. Prabhu. He was so humble. Very humble. He quoted that, uh, told that at the time of Dhyas Puja, he told so. 